Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, search in rotated sorted array two. I solved the first one of this, I think like three years ago. And this problem is almost exactly the same as the first version. So I will kind of summarize the solution for that one. But I will say that this problem is pretty damn hard for a medium problem. The main difference is we're given a sorted array of numbers. In the original problem, these numbers were in increasing order. So if you draw them like a graph, it would look like this, where each value is always going to be increasing. This time we're given a non-decreasing order array. So actually it might look something like this, where we have like a flat line somewhere and we could actually have potentially multiple flat lines like this. And this makes the problem a lot more complicated and I'll show you an example of why that is. To quickly summarize, again, this array is going to be rotated. So for example, if we had an array one, two, three, four, to rotate it is basically to cut it in half somewhere and then take this portion, the right portion, and reverse it. Well, not reverse it, but just like switch them around. So the rotated version of this would look something like three, four, and then one, two. It's This time it's rotated from exactly in the middle. Now we're also given a target value and we want to determine if the target is within the array or not. Now that's a simple problem to solve. Why not just linearly scan through the array? Yep, that's pretty easy. You can do it in big O of n time. But of course, the fact that this array is sorted, we can use that to our advantage. In the original problem, we were able to solve it in log n time. And the reason we were able to do that is... We set up a binary search, a traditional one, where we have a left pointer at the edge and a right pointer at the other edge. We calculate a midpoint, and I think in this case our mid would be here, because we take the left and right, add them up, and divide by two. Now I mentioned in the problem we solved the other day that if you take left and right, add them together, that can potentially overflow before you're even able to divide it by two. So another way to calculate this is actually to take left plus right minus left and divide that part by two. Now, why does this work? Well, think about it. We have a picture this time, so it's a little bit easier to understand. What we're doing here, taking the difference between them. Basically, we're taking the length of this subarray and we're taking that and then we're dividing it by two. So kind of like this, right? We're taking this part and then adding it to the left pointer. So in this case, I think right is equal to three, left is equal to zero. You take three minus zero, you're gonna get three. And you take three and you divide it by two, we end up rounding down and I think that will be a one. So we basically get the exact same answer, left plus one in this example, which we'll put mid over here. That's the idea, but that's just a little bit of math. It's not a big deal. But to get back to the problem at hand, how are we gonna use the fact that this array is sorted, or at least two parts of this array are sorted, how are we going to use that to our advantage to run a binary search? Well, it would be nice if we can identify which portion of the array we're in. Remember in this example, well, I guess I didn't even mention it, but let's say our target in this case is equal to one. I'll be changing this just to illustrate how the binary search is going to work. Of course, the first thing to check would be, is the value at the middle pointer equal to the target? No, it's not. Now, the hard thing here is, how do we know, should we search on the left side or should we search on the right side? If it was a basic sorted array, we just compare the target with the middle value. It's not that simple in this case, but the first thing to know, to recognize would be, well, are we in the left portion of the array or are we in the right portion of the array? What I'm going to do right now is basically just run through every possible scenario. Basically, what we're doing here is just a bit of discrete math, really, because it's not like there are infinite possibilities. There are a discrete set of possibilities, and we're going to run through each of them to make sure our algorithm works. Now, in this case, we are clearly in the left sorted portion. But how would we know that? By looking at every element, it's pretty obvious. But how can we know that algorithmically, and how can we do it efficiently? Well, think about it. The left value is always going to be less than the middle value if we're in the left portion. Now, if our middle pointer was over here, that would not be the case. Three is not less than one. 
So that's the way we know it. It's very easy. All we do is check is nums at left index less than nums at middle index. Then we are in the left side of the array. If this is not true, then we're in the right side of the array. Or in other words, if the left value is greater than the value at the middle. And again, that's pretty obvious if our middle value is over here because we know every value over here is going to be less than this value because the array was sorted and then we rotated it. By definition, all of these guys are going to be smaller than this guy. And this is the part where you might start to realize why the original solution won't work on this problem. Because like I said, by definition, this is going to be the case if the array was sorted. But this one was in non-decreasing order. It wasn't in sorted like an in increasing order. So actually, we won't know that. But I'm not even going to cover that just yet. Let's just try to really understand how to solve the first version of this problem. So... Now we have a way to know whether we're in this side of the array or we're in this side of the array. How do we use that to our advantage? Well, once again, it's pretty simple once you actually know it. Let's say this part of the array is sorted from left to mid. Well, the obvious thing to do is check, is the target value within that sorted range? It's pretty easy again, just check if the number at the left pointer is less than or equal to the target and and also check is the target less than the value at the middle pointer so this inequality we're checking is the target in between that range if it is it's pretty obvious what we should do right we should take our middle pointer we should start searching to the left of the middle pointer and usually with binary search we do that by taking our right pointer and setting it to mid minus one so it'd be set over here now, clearly in this example, that is not the case. This inequality is not true. What does that tell us? That tells us that if the target does exist in this array, well, it's definitely not going to be in this portion. So what do you think we should do? Search on the right side. How do we do that? Take our left pointer, set it to mid plus one. It's going to go over there. So we're just going to cross these guys out because we don't need to consider them anymore. And our left pointer is now going to be over here. And at this point, we'll be able to find the solution. But I want to run through the other cases as well. Suppose our middle pointer was actually over here, and let's say our target this time is actually equal to 3, just to make things interesting. If it was 1, then of course we just found our solution, but let's say it's 3. What do we do? Well, we have a way to recognize we're in the right sorted portion of the array. So what do we do? We check, is the target within this range? Is the target greater than or equal to 1? Well, it's definitely not going to be equal to 1 because that's something we would immediately check. So we would check, is target greater than 1? And is it less than or equal to 2? Well, in this case, it's 3. It's not within that range. So this time we would cross that out. Now, if it was within that range, what we would do is take our left pointer, set it to mid plus one. So we would search this range and maybe three would happen to be over here, but that's not the case. So this time we would set our right pointer to mid minus one. So it would be over here. And then we would be able to find the solution here because we're going to find that we're in the left sorted portion. And we're going to find that three does lie within this range. And then we would cross this guy out. And eventually we would find that three is over here. So that's how we solve the original problem. But let me show you an interesting example. It's pretty basic. Let's say I have one, two, two, a bunch of repeated values and a three. And let's say I rotate it so that it looks something like this where the one is over here. So we kind of rotated it from this part. Like this is the pivot. So just redrawing it. This is our rotated array. Now, let's say our left pointer is here, right pointer is here, our middle is over here. The hard part here is that we don't know whether we are in the left sorted portion or the right sorted portion because remember, originally we were doing that by checking if our middle value is greater than the leftmost value, then we're in the left sorted portion. We can't do that because now they can potentially be equal. And it's even more obvious if I take the rotated sorted array and actually rotate it about the middle so that it looks like this, where the two, two, three is here and then the one, two, two is there because potentially you can imagine our middle pointer might be here for some reason. 
like assuming we had a much larger array, maybe our middle pointer ends up here and our left guy is over here. We don't know, does this two belong to the left sorted portion? Like, is this just a string of twos or is this middle pointer over here? It's in the left sorted portion. And then, you know, there's going to be a pivot and then there's going to be values here. Like, look at this. We have twos on both sides. I'm sure you realize why we can't do the original solution now. We don't know which side of the array we're in. Therefore, we can't potentially just eliminate half of the array. So knowing that, how are we going to be able to solve this problem? Are we forced to do a linear scan? Well, it kind of depends on the input. Like in this case, where the middle is equal to the left value, it's true. We don't know which portion of the array we're in. So the best we can really do is say, well, we found, we looked at the middle value. This is not the target. So theoretically we could eliminate that, but that makes binary search very hard. So we're not actually gonna do that. But we recognize that since this value is equal to the left value, that's the reason we can't do binary search. But that also is convenient for us because they're equal. This value is equal. So therefore, we know that this can't possibly be the target because this was not the target. So then we would just eliminate this and then take our left pointer and shift it over here and then continue our algorithm here. And the reason we're doing it this way is because in some cases we can run binary search. In some cases, we will be able to eliminate half of the array. And as I continue running it on this example, you'll see. I'll just redraw this really quickly just to make it a bit more readable. But now we're gonna take this left pointer and shift it by one so that's over here which would basically mean like in this example, our left pointer is going to be here and our right pointer is going to be here. We recalculate the middle. It's going to be here again. And once again, this is equal to the leftmost value. So we can't determine whether we're in the left portion or the right portion. Knowing that, what are we going to do? Once again, we're just going to eliminate the leftmost value. So taking our left pointer now and shifting it here, this is where things are going to get a bit more interesting. Well, actually not yet. Once again, our middle, I think is going to be over here. Same as the left. So once again, we shift it. So left is now finally going to be here. Now things get interesting. Now our middle pointer is going to be here. We're going to find that we are in the left sorted portion. And I didn't even mention what our target was, but let's say our target is actually equal to one. What we would do is same thing as we did in the original algorithm. We're going to check if one is within this range from two to three. It's not in this case. So therefore, the target is definitely not going to be in this sorted portion. This is the part where we actually were able to eliminate multiple values from consideration. We take our left pointer and set it to be M plus one. So that's the idea. Like this is kind of a augmented binary search where the worst case time complexity is actually going to be big O of N because in the worst case, we could have every value be the exact same. And in that case, we would just kind of increment one by one. You might think, well, if the edges are the exact same, don't we automatically know that every value is going to be the same and therefore maybe we can just immediately return? No, for the reason that I mentioned earlier, like we could have an array that looks like this, two, two, three, and then one, two, two, where like there's a comma between each of these. So that's the example. Like it's not straightforward. So in the worst case, yes, we might have to run this in big O of n time, but in the best case, we can solve it in log n time with binary search, depending on what the input actually looks like. Again, this is not an easy problem, but with this intuition, we can finally code it up. So first thing we're going to do is set up our pointers for binary search. Left is all the way at the left. Right is going to be length minus one. And then we're going to run binary search pretty standard. While the pointers have not crossed each other, we calculate the midpoint. And again, I'm going to do that like I did last time. And like I explained this time where we take the difference between these, divide it by two so that we can take that difference and then add it to the left pointer, which will actually give us the middle pointer. First thing to check is, have we found the target? And if we have, let's immediately return true. If we haven't, let's continue our binary search, or at least start the binary search. But actually, to make things simple, before I check this, before I check, is the leftmost value less than the middle pointer? Because this indicates 
we are in the left portion. That means the middle pointer is in the left portion of the array. And the opposite, like I said, else if nums at left is greater than the middle, that means we're in the right portion. Before I check either of these, I'm gonna check and actually, I, I was going to do it before, but now I realize we can probably just put it here. Like we can just put an else here and the else would indicate obviously that these two values are equal. And that means we can't determine which portion of the array we're in. So we take the easy way out and we just say, well, we're just going to increment our left pointer by one. And that's it. That's the best we can really do. And remember, we're returning true or false here. So let's say we're never able to find the target outside of the loop. We would return false. Now, somewhere inside the loop, well, over here, we're returning true. So... Now let's expand on these two cases, just like I mentioned earlier, and this is pretty much same as the previous problem. If we're in the left portion and our target value is also within that portion in Python, it's pretty convenient. You can write it as a single inequality like this, but I'm sure you can take this and convert it into two uh, comparisons in other languages as well. So if we're in the left portion, like our target is also in the left portion, it's pretty easy. We take our right pointer and set it to M minus one. Let's continue searching in the left portion. The else case would be where we search in the right portion. We can do that by setting M equal or setting left equal to M plus one. Now, I'm just going to copy and paste this because we're going to do something very similar here in the right portion. Is the target in the right portion? How do we know? Well, if it's going to be greater than mid or less than or equal to right. If that's the case, then we search on the right side. How do we do that? We take our left pointer and set it to mid plus one. And if that's not the case, we set our right pointer equal to mid minus one. Once again, the reason we don't put an equal over here is because we know for sure the target is not going to be equal to the middle pointer because we literally check it up over here. And same reason why we don't have an equal in between these two. We know they're not equal. If they were, we would have returned true by now. So let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. Check out neatcode.io for more. And hopefully I'll see you soon.